So look. So here I am outside of a Starbucks in DuPont Circle here in Washington, D.C. Late at night. As you can see, it's quite dark. Uh, and earlier today, I did a video in which I talked about the homeless people as being wrong for using this drug that they know is killing people and I mentioned how that I've had some people over the years to assume that I think homeless people are perfect or other stupid things you know things that have never been true things that I've never said never implied but you know if I don't actually say enough negative things about the homeless people then people just kind of assume that I think the homeless are perfect but like I said in that video uh, I, I tend to go at those who have the power to, to create an environment that's conducive to the homeless people doing right uh, as opposed to telling the homeless people who lack any real power you know, to pull themselves up by the bootstraps. But that said, this video is not about that. This video is about why it is that anybody would be suicidal, or, and that is del deliberately suicidal, going out and doing something that ends their life uh, very deliberately, such as hanging themselves, or why they would use a drug that they hear is killing people. Yeah. So, so some people very obviously intend to kill themselves and other people, uh, if they don't mean to kill themselves, then they're just really, really stupid because they're going out and they're using something that the news has already told them. Is killing a lot, a lot of people. Uh, so, why would somebody want to end their life? Well, I don't claim to be like Dr. Phil. Okay, I'm not going to pretend that I have the answer. But I'll give some insight, though. You see, I I know that women for a number of years have claimed that men don't express enough emotion, enough feeling, yada, yada, yada. Okay. And I think that there may be a little bit of a misunderstanding there. Yeah. I can tell you as a man that some of what I feel is not feminine emotion doesn't even come close to being feminine emotion, but it is feeling nonetheless. Uh, I'm a regular church attendee, and one of the things that I look for when I go to church, and I am gravely disappointed time and time again, is for people who really want to have deep discussions get right down into the grim realities of life you know I, I figure you know a lot of people don't go to church and don't talk about God and don't believe in God because they ask the question you know how could a loving God let so many terrible things happen in the world and sometimes they'll go into the church or they'll speak to a church goer or they'll speak to clergy and they'll ask you know how how is it that so many terrible things happen in the world if God is a loving God? And then these churchgoers and these clergy, they give these incomplete answers and say, oh, well, it's just because there's not enough love in the world and people aren't obeying God, yada, yada, yada. You know, and, it's, and if a logical person really wanted to have a full conversation about this issue and not let you get away with these half-based half-baked answers, then they could say, look, if God is in control of all, then God needs to use that control 
to make happen the things that he wants to happen. And uh, if he is in full control, we have to assume that whatever's happening is what he wants to happen. You know, uh, it's and there's a school of thought called finite godism and that school of thought says that either God is unable to make good happen in the world or he's complicit with the evil that occurs and far be it from me to blaspheme God far be it from me to call God weak uh, so I, I would have to go with the idea that God is complicit with much of the evil if, or, or even all of the evil that occurs in the world. Uh, you read the book of Job, you can see why I believe that. But I can see why someone would be suicidal. I mean, I, I personally have asked myself time and time again, do I really want to go on in a world where I just don't relate to the emotionalism around me and where I just, I don't find myself surrounded by people who think in the ways that I used to appreciate 20 and 30 years ago. Uh, it seems like people's level of thought has just gone so far downhill. And I mean society as a whole. Uh, they don't like to do the critical thinking that even used to be done 20 or 30 years ago. And that, that begins to explain why someone like me would remain homeless for a long time. Uh, because, well, number one, I've, I do a lot of advocating, advocating for solutions. But as I do that, I often try to get government folk and nonprofit folk to think better, to think deeper, to wrap their head around the, the pertinent grim realities, to look at the glitch pattern in terms of what they do to try to end homelessness, uh, not to be so big on just patting each other on the back and telling each other what a good job you're doing because there are so many grim realities to life. And quite frankly, people who are just caught up on good news and emotion and those sorts of things, uh, when I give in to those sorts of conversational rules and, and I only say what satisfies your emotions or I abstain from saying what doesn't satisfy your emotions, it's like I'm killing myself. You know, I, I mean... I don't know how to explain this to you, all you emotional people, but it's, it, it's almost like I'm killing myself because I'm holding back on and, and not just kind of letting loose the way that I want to and not just getting into you and saying, look, you know, regardless of what you feel or what you prefer to believe, this is just the ugly truth. You know, I, I'm kind of big on ugly truths and... When the logic of the conversation says, hey, this is a very pertinent, ugly truth, you know, we, we started out talking about solving a certain problem, and the, and the logic led to this ugly truth, and let's not shy away from it, you know, or this person walked into the church and said, why does a loving God allow so many bad things to happen in the world, and you didn't want to consider the ugly scriptures, yeah, and so... You told them what you thought sounded nice. You gave them the short answer, you know, and and so I find myself in a thought environment in our society that I really can't stand. And I find that because of the emotion that has gotten out into the public sphere in the past 40 years, and because of the... Uh, stated or implied conversational rules around regarding people's feelings and preferences and emotions that my thought process could just kind of gets completely shut down to the point where it's like I'm not even living anymore because I'm, I'm not expressing my thoughts 
because I have to look out for your emotions, you know, and and that that really is a permeating uh, concern of mine. It, 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 it permeates the way that I approach my faith. It permeates the way that I approach homeless advocacy. You know, what I want is to, is to get to a place in our society where, you know, I, I generally already speak in very calm, respectful tones. It's very unusual for me to lose my cool. And some of you probably watch my videos and say, uh, he, he doesn't really get emotional. He doesn't really show a lot of feeling. Uh, even when he's talking about things that would elicit a lot of feeling from me, the viewer, he doesn't really get that intent. Okay. And, well, what can, what can I say? I, um, but, you know, I, I, I just look to be in a place where everybody that I meet is able to have full logical conversations uh, and when the logic of a conversation gets to a place where an ugly truth is manifesting itself and when I have spoken and continue to speak in calm, respectful tones, regardless of how much they, the truth that is manifesting hurts your feelings, you should say, okay, Eric is speaking in calm, respectful tones, and what Eric is saying makes a lot of sense, even if it's an ugly truth, and you should be able to finish the conversation and not let your feelings just get in the way so much that we can't finish the conversation because the thoughts that are being expressed respectfully bother you you know and so so anyway uh i know i've gone on for a while and i've tried to explain to you you know what what really upsets me about the world around me you know uh and the emotional types, ladies, you might not fully understand that, yes, I do feel, but my feelings are not emotional feelings. My feelings are wanting to just be able to continue the conversation uh, even when it gets to those ugly truths, even when it gets to things that you don't want to believe. Uh, I remember living in Florida and having the experience where in some instances there'd be a mixture of men and women who are discussing some uh, issue and uh, starting out we may not have realized that there were some who really wanted to dig down and find the truth no matter how ugly it is and there were some who had what they preferred to believe but then there's a point where somebody in the conversation who who doesn't like the truths that are being teased out says well this might not make a lot of sense but it's what I choose to believe and then they may even excuse themselves from the conversation. And that makes a lot of sense. When you realize that the conversation is about figuring out the truth, no matter how ugly it is, if you don't want to know what the truth is, no matter how ugly it is, then you excuse yourself from the conversation. But in the meantime, you know, I personally am really fed up with the low grade of thought, the low quality of thought in our society and I just kind of find myself being boxed in by people's emotional rules. Uh, so, let me see if I can explain this a little, a little bit better. Um, so, I remember an instance in which uh, I was at a social justice meeting and uh, I knew that the phrase I was using wasn't the best 
possible phrase to explain the matter I wanted to explain. I was talking about a situation where the blacks were the majority in a certain location and there were a few whites and a few Hispanics and I used the phrase reverse racism. Now, I know the true definition of racism, that it's a system of oppression that keeps people from advancing socioeconomically. I realize that calling somebody the N-word or some other uh, nasty name is not true racism. But uh, anyway, when I couldn't find the word that I wanted to use, I, I did say reverse racism. And there was a guy who said to me, Eric, there is no such thing as reverse racism. And I was actually going to agree with him and say what I just said in this video. But there was a young lady who was leading the discussion. And when she saw that I was about to respond, she didn't realize I was actually going to agree with him. <coughs> One of the rules of the conversation that we were in was that we weren't going to debate we were going to let everybody say what they had to say in this safe space and that safe space rule uh, got to where she, she unwittingly stopped me from agreeing with the guy uh, I remember another instance where I was in a meeting there were government folk there nonprofit people uh, freelance homeless advocates like myself and uh they, they said that we weren't going to debate with anyone. Everyone just was going to ha have that safe space uh, to say what they had to say. And so in this instance, a bunch of people began to uh, preface their statements with, well, I'm not trying to argue with you, but I have to say dot, dot, dot. And they'd respond to what the person before them said <laughs> uh, or... You know, I'm not trying to argue with you or I'm not trying to debate with you, but this is my response to what you just said, you know. And there was one guy, a president, a guy named Jesse, who, who beat me to the punch in terms of saying, oh, so all, all you have to do is preface your statements with, I'm not trying to debate with you, I'm not trying to argue with you, and that makes it okay. You know, but sometimes the, the rules of conversation, the rules that are in intended to protect emotions and protect feelings and protect sensitivities are so strict that they don't allow for the very pertinent reasoning. It may be some ugly reasoning, but very pertinent to the conversation, pertinent to the topic, gets blocked out. And so... Maybe I can better explain the concept by saying, look, you know, there, well, well, there was the scripture where this, I think a Syro, Syro Phoenician woman went to Jesus for healing and Jesus said, uh, I, I shall not take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Uh, and some people like to point out and that he was essentially calling her a bitch. <laughs> I, and uh, I've made that point myself. Uh, but anyway, she said, hey, but even the dogs get to eat the crumbs that fall from the table. And uh, so Jesus took her as saying, well, okay, all I need is a crumb of, of your healing power. And he said, well, your, your faith has made you whole, or, or your daughter whole, whichever the case was. I kind of get some of these miracle stories mixed up. But um, anyway, she got what she wanted, and uh, it was because she had a good comeback. But, but um, I was going somewhere with that. <laughs> now let me see if I can figure out where I was going uh, uh, with that. I probably won't. But... but um, and anyway, I'm going to give it a few more seconds. I can say so much and get so many thoughts going that I sometimes lose track of where I was going to go because I had too many, too many tangents going on in my thought process here. But um, let me see. I'll think a little bit longer. Okay. 
Wait, let me pause this. It's not pausing. Okay, I figured out where I was gonna go with that. Okay. Um, well, so I, I mentioned the woman who Jesus called the bitch when he said that he shall not throw the children's food to the dogs. Um, and, you know, when it comes to employers, I, I kind of expect to get the same reaction from them that this woman got from Jesus. You know, he, when he, he said, you know, you're, you're one of the dogs. I can't give you the children's food. I can't give you the Israelites' food. Uh, an employer uh, may essentially say, hey, look, you know, you homeless people are dogs. I can't give you the children's food. I can't give you what I should be giving to people who aren't homeless. I can't give you what I should be giving to better people than yourselves. Uh, and when when a homeless person gives that intelligent comeback and says, hey, look, you know, part of why I'm homeless is because people like you just won't give me a job even when I'm qualified, even when I want to work, even when I'm willing to prove myself, you know, then just like Jesus gave that Gentile woman what she wanted in, uh, in spite of the fact that she was a Gentile, the employer should give that homeless person who has that good comeback a job in spite of the fact that they're homeless. When they make that intelligent remark and they tell you, hey, look, you know, at, if, if all employers have attitudes like you, well, then I can never get out of homelessness. You know, then that employer should be hit right in the heart and, and should say, okay, you know, homeboy's got a good point. Homegirl's got a good point. You know, but that brings me right back to the issue of the quality of thought that we need to have in society. You know, I, I'm just really fed up with people's low thought quality. You know, and, and oftentimes... They're, they get in their feelings and they may speak faster than me and they may speak louder than me and they may speak more emotionally than I'll ever speak you know, as they make their point and they swear that they're right because they're loud and they speak quickly and, and they've got a lot of feeling with it. But you know, it doesn't matter how loud you are, how quickly you speak or how much feeling is behind what you say, you could still be dead wrong. You know, uh, there have been people who hear that a home, that homeless person is going to get housed by the government in their apartment complex and they're like I don't want homeless people living around me you know and it's like look you won't have homeless people living around you because once they get housed they're no longer homeless okay uh, but there's a lot of stupidity even among uh, working people there's a lot of stupidity even among uh, restaurant management and CEOs, you know, people of all economic strata do stupid things. Uh, there was a KFC manager who hired a woman who had only been homeless for about three months. Uh, it wasn't a cultural thing with her. Uh, and she had been looking for work every day. And when he, But when he found out she was homeless... He withdrew the job offer. She showed up for her first day of work, and he had found out between hiring her and, and her actual first day of work that she was homeless. So when she showed up at the door to, for her first day of work, he turned her around and told her, uh, don't come back till you have a home and, and you have a car of your own. Uh, and that was Tupelo, Mississippi, several years ago. Um, and it's like, wait a minute, how can you be that damn stupid? And anyway, I just see so much stupidity in society, yeah, and, and I sometimes ask myself, do I even want to be part of this type of society that is so ignorant, that is so stupid, where even when, when you try to instill intelligent thoughts in people, uh, the conversational rules, the emotional rules, the feeling-oriented rules prevent you from doing so. You know, the, the social norms prevent you from doing so. Uh, and so, 
I as an individual just really find it hard to answer that question of where I want to fit in because I think about the the stupidity and the social norms that I have to deal with on a regular basis and this video was about why people would be suicidal and uh, I just kind of got into why I personally just have a hard time figuring out where I want to fit in uh, and, and so what I do as an advocate is I, I just find those different difficult thoughts difficult for others difficult for nonprofit people difficult for government people and I really can just kind of beat them over the head with those thoughts I, I present them in ways that, that really drill down into them I juxtapose the number of homeless that we had in 2004 when we began to work on homelessness and on ending it and the number of homeless we had in 2018 and I show the, the very slow progress I, slow, I show the, the glitch pattern I, I do tend to focus on the ugly truths but one of the reasons that I do that with government is because uh, with other aspects of life and other groups uh, there, there's not a moral mandate you know I can't mandate that somebody accept my religion I can't mandate that somebody who practices my religion uh, adopt my interpretation of this or that scripture but there is a moral mandate when it comes to government saying we're going to end this social ill in 10 years and then we, we get 14 years into it and they still haven't ended that social ill and they still haven't even gotten it down to three quarters or less of, of what it was when they started you know and when they go to a plan b and they haven't even yet figured out why plan a didn't work you know then it, at least when it comes to government and their failures and the uh, billions of tax dollars that they put into their failures, then there's a moral mandate. So if I had my druthers, I would drill down into anyone and everyone whenever I uh, hear them saying anything stupid. And I would really just kind of beat them over the head, figuratively speaking, anytime that they mention a belief that doesn't make enough sense. Anytime that they mention something that they prefer to believe, but e even after logic has been presented that says, look, most likely you're wrong. You know, and uh, so if I had my druthers, I, I, I wouldn't just back off and let people believe what they choose to believe once strong logic has been presented uh, pointing in a very different direction. Or, or once evidence has been presented that clearly proves that what they choose to believe is not right. Um, and so, so anyway, the social norms when it comes to emotion and feeling really get beside me. So I do feel, but I, I just feel that those social norms don't make enough sense. And uh, I know about freedom of religion, but religion, uh, in its most basic sense, is a search for truth, not a search for what you choose to believe. Uh, and I go to church because I believe that God really does exist, and I have all sorts of reasons for believing that. I don't just go because I want to hear that there is a sweetheart in the sky who loves us all. You know, if, if it's just all about us showing lots of love to each other, I don't need to open up a Bible to get God to validate what I already planned to do, okay? I tell people this all the time, that, hey, if, if you just choose to live a certain way, don't open the Bible for validation. If you're already hell-bent on living a certain way, just do you and uh, do it because it's what you believe. Uh, when you say this is what God wants, then you imply that you are willing to do God's will, whatever it might be, even if it turns out not to be what you initially hoped. 
Uh, so, if you're already hell-bent on living a certain way, then why would you even l try to find out God's will? You know, when you, when you open a Bible, when you ask what God's will is, it stands to reason that you're ready, willing, and able to change in accordance with his word once you find it out. And there's also a sensibility that says, look, anybody who can create the entire world and everything in the galaxy, everything in the universe, uh, you, you might not want to disobey him, you know, because he can obviously do you. Uh, but that's just some of the tough logic that people don't like to think about. You know, they come up with these preconceived notions that they want to make God out to be this sweetheart in a tutu, wearing a pink bow, fluttering around heaven and saying, everybody do what you want. You know, I love you all, no matter what you do. And there's stronger logic that just says, no, that doesn't make enough sense. But it's already more than a half hour long and starting to rain, so I'm cutting it out.